Hi, welcome to Books on the Go. I'm Anna and I'm here today with a, at a book haul for October, uh, which is to say that I failed in my book buying ban, um, which I sort of imposed because my TBR stack has grown so much. Um, but th there's been a failure, so let's see what happened. Um, and oh, I'm just having a really nice peppermint tea which is reviving me. Um, the first book as part of the failure was The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. And this one I bought because we're doing it for the Adelaide Book Club, which I'm part of. Um, so I can, look, I can come up with excuses for all of these, but um, there you go, you know how it is. <laughs> um, so this is fine, it's a historical fiction um, about World War Two, set in France and it's about two women who um, I think they were sisters and they saved some Jewish children from being sent away to the camps or being killed. It's absolutely fine, it's quite moving. I actually skim read it because it, it wasn't for me. Um, so I actually skimmed through very briefly and I was still moved um, by some of the scenes towards the end but I did feel like my sort of strings were being pulled if you like it was sentimental um, it's just a bit too uh, not overwritten but everything is carefully explained to you and spelt out so she she tells you how she's feeling at different times and um, she says, for example, when they put a seatbelt on her, well, I was part of the generation that didn't need to be protected from every danger. And I think some of those things don't need to be said. And it's not to take anything away from Kristen Hanna because she's a lovely writer and not to, I don't want to sound like I'm damning <laughs> the book with faint praise, but I think compared to what I've been reading recently, um, which is a bit more taut and edgy and fresh um, and contemporary. It just felt a bit pedestrian. Um, and in particular, I, I would recommend, if you're interested in World War II, I found um, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Durr, which is a similar time and place. Um, there was something quirky and really fresh about that book which I loved and the other one of course is Sweet Francaise by Irene Nemirovsky which was written at the time in France when there was the German occupation and is beautiful and has more of a French sensibility um, so it felt a lot more authentic I think t for me but you know it might be partly I'm not so much into historical fiction so um, not for me, but it'll be interesting to see what the rest of the book club thought. That's The Nightingale. Um, then one that I had seen a year or so ago that was out, The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. And um, he used to work in publishing for quite some time and I'd heard that this was a really good crime thriller and that he, having learnt some tricks of the trade and seen, I suppose, the ingredients for success has not copied but has adopted that and executed it really well in this book. So I had thought, well, that's good. I don't necessarily need to read it, but I, I imagine it will be good. Um, then I heard him speaking on another podcast and his voice was so compelling. Um, he has this delightful accent from a part of America that um, I don't know if it's Boston I think it's somewhere in the east. Someone might be able to tell me, but it's so sort of magnetic the way he speaks. And I think there's a movie coming out with Amy Adams and I just decided I think I might like to read it and it's really good. It's just what, you know, it does what it says on the tin. It is a page turner. It does um, riff on the girl on the train and Gone Girl and some of um, those recent books but he had been thinking about that style of thriller for a, a while before they became successful so he I don't think it's derivative so much as um, he knew once they were successful that 
he could sell a book like that. And it also, what I liked about it was that he loves movies and so it also has a lot of movie references and that, so he plays with those and there are elements of this that are a bit like a Hitchcock um, film or other black and white sort of noir films and he uses I think a lot of those references and then there are echoes because the main character a woman who is trapped in her house because she has agoraphobia and and there's a mystery about why why that is how did that arise um, she can't leave the house but she watches lots of movies and so sometimes there'll be a line in a movie and then something's happening in her life and the as a reader you you're trying to work out well that's a clue but um you that doesn't well I wasn't able to work out <laughs> what what all the clues were I did guess some of the things that were happening but um it didn't spoil it for me really enjoyed it um so I'll be fascinated to see what he's doing next that's the woman in the window by AJ Finn um, and that was a treat for me because I had just finished reading a book that I didn't enjoy which we won't talk about yet so that hit the spot um, the next one quite different is The Last Girl by Nadia Murad and I bought this because we're doing it on the podcast Nadia Murad just won the Nobel Peace Prize and she is an activist um, for justice for uh, women who've been captured and used as sex slaves in wars around the world. And in her case, um, she was enslaved by ISIS for a number of years, I believe. Um, there's a forward by Amal Clooney who has acted for her. She's now safely in Germany, uh, but she grew up in Iraq. Uh, she's lost, I think, six brothers and her mother, among possibly other family members. So it sounds quite harrowing, but I think it will be an important read and it should be a really good one to discuss. So that's coming up. That's The Last Girl by Nadia Murad and co-written with Jenna Krojewski. And... Then we have another one that we're doing on the podcast and that is There There by Tommy Orange. This has just been shortlisted for the National Book Awards in the States and he's an American Indian author um, and he's written this set in, so he's a member of the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes of Oklahoma and I think this is set in Oklahoma Oakland. This is set around the time of the big Oakland powwow and it's got two sisters who've grown apart, um, Jackie Redfeather and her sister Opal and Jackie um, is newly sober and she's trying to reconnect with the family and then they have um, Dean who's collecting stories to honour his uncle's death um, Opal is watching her son Orville or her boy Orville dance um, but then there's Tony Lone Man who is also there but he has dark intentions um, so apparently it's fierce funny and groundbreaking and it's a debut novel so I'm, I actually don't know what to expect but it sounds very fresh and you know an important new voice in fiction so that's There There by Tommy Orange. Um, and then this one, which just looks beautiful. It's a beautiful book. Um, Disoriental by Nagar Javadi. Um, and she is Iranian, I believe. It's written in French um, and partly set in Paris. But then it's a woman who's in a, at a fertility clinic but then she's having memories of her family and the myths that were told by her family about all the, the history of Iran. So it sounds like it sort of merges this sweeping history with a family saga. I don't know much more about it, but again, it's coming up on the podcast, so I had to buy it. But uh, it came onto my radar when I was looking for books for Women in Translation Month in August. And so I'm really excited to be getting to it. 
just a couple of months later. Um, so that's Disoriental by Nagar Javadi. So I'll report back. Um, I'm really keen to start that one tonight, actually, but I'm doing Silence of the Girls first for the podcast. So I'm, I'm being diligent, which I'm also excited about. So I'm going to read that first, and then I think this will be next. Then um, this is Heroes by Stephen Fry. And it's his follow-up to Mythos, which I absolutely loved. Um, I listened to Mythos on audio, actually. So it's all about the Greek myths. And he, Stephen Fry narrated it and is, was just superb because it has all of his love of theatre and his brilliant skills as a narrator, but also his enthusiasm for the subject and and language and all of that so I really recommend the audio and if there is an audio for this one that he narrates I think that's how I will read it but I also do um, like having the book and sometimes because with Greek myths there are so many different characters and names that I don't always retain that if I'm just listening to something I need to see it written down so I do sometimes go back to check some of the stories in the book so I definitely had to have that despite the ban so I just thought I might as well get it now what you know now that I've seen it and we'll keep that for later so that's Heroes by Stephen Fry and that's it so it's not bad that's the one two three four five six books in October there might have been a couple more that um, I didn't have at hand when I came to film so we'll just pretend it was only six I'd love to know if you've bought anything or got anything um, that you're excited about reading in the next few weeks um, I'm going to do I think Silence of the Girls next and then I'm keen to get to Disoriental but we'll see and um, let me know what you're up to see you soon bye mm -hmm.